Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on find percent of a number mentally. You'll learn how to compute mentally with percents and how to estimate with percents. Now, before we get started, there are certain percent to fraction equivalents that you do need to know for this lesson. Some of these include 25% fifty percent, seventy-five percent, and of course one hundred percent. Now twenty-five percent is one-fourth, fifty percent is two-fourths, which simplifies to one-half, seventy-five percent is three-fourths, and one hundred percent is four-fourths, or just one over one, or just one. The next set, 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80%. Now these are our fifths. So 20% is one-fifth, 40% is two-fifths, 60% is three-fifths, and 80% is four-fifths. Then we have our 10%, 30%, 70%, and 90%. Now, the reason we're not counting all of our 10s are we have some of them already done, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 50. So 10, 30, 70, 90 um, are the rest of our 10%, which means 10% is 1 tenth, 30% is 3 tenths, 70% is 7 tenths, and 90% is 9 tenths. Now there are a couple of other ones that involve fractions here, such as 12.5%, 37.5%, and 87.5%. These are our eighths, where 12.5% is 1 eighth, 37.5% is 3 eighths, 5 eighths, and 7 eighths. If you're asking, well, where's 2 eighths? That's the 1 fourth, 25%. 4 eighths is 1 half, and 6 eighths is 3 fourths. Our last set. 16 and 2 thirds percent, 33 and a third percent, 62, I'm sorry, 66 and 2 thirds percent, and 83 and 1 third percent. Now these are our sixths. So the first one is one sixth, the next one is two sixth, which is one third. Three sixths was the one half, so that's 50%, but next would be four sixths, which simplifies to two thirds, and then five sixths. So these are organized, believe it or not, where you can see your fourths, your fifths, your tenths, your eighths, and your sixths. And some of these simplify, as you can see, your sixth, sixths imply to thirds at times. Let's use these now to find percents of numbers mentally. So we're going to find the percent of each number mentally, 50% of 46. Well, here's how we can think through this. Think using fractions. Our goal is to use fractions to compute these numbers mentally. So 50%, when you think of 50%, think that this is one half of 46. And what is one half of 46? Well, that is 23. What about 70% of 110? Well, if you use your table, 70% is 
seven tenths of one hundred and ten. Now in your head, you can do a little bit of cross simplifying here, where that's a one and that's eleven. And then you just go seven times eleven is seventy-seven. So you can still write a little bit down. Just because it says mental doesn't mean you're not allowed to write a little bit down. Our goal is to use fractions here to compute this mentally. And as you get started with this, you may need to think, okay, how does this simplify? How can I, as I move on, as I continue practicing these, do these just in my head? So you are allowed to show a little bit of work. Now our next set uses decimals to compute mentally. And so we have 10% of 54. Well, 10% as a decimal, remember, you move your decimal point back twice, is 0.1 times 54. And what we're going to do there when we multiply by 1 tenth is simply move our decimal point back once with our number. So this becomes 5 and 4 tenths. And 1% of 219, you need to be careful here. This is 0 0.01 times 219. And so we're actually going to move our decimal point back to the left twice. 1, 2. And so this becomes 2.19, or 2 and 19 hundredths. So sometimes with our 10% or our 1%, we can actually just use your decimals to help you when it's 0.1 or 10%, you're going to move your decimal to the left once. When it's 1% or 0 0.01, you can move your decimal to the back or to the left, excuse me, twice. Garrett is shopping for a new video game. The original price of the game is $60. The game is 10% off. How much will Garrett save? Now, you don't actually need to write the problem out here. Um, you can just compute this in your head. If you use decimals again, I'll show you how to think through this, but 10% can be 0.1 times the 60. And remember, 10%, we're going to move the decimal back to the left once. So this just becomes $6. Now, in all caps, estimate 22% of 494. Now the neat thing here is that you can round both numbers here. Now, 22% of 494. 22% is pretty close to 20%. And 494 is pretty close to 500. So the way you can think about this with our 20%, 20% is 1 -fifth times 500. And one-fifth of 500 is simply 100. Now, one-fourth percent. Let's go ahead with our fractional percents. Let's estimate using 1% first. And we can use 1% of, let's say... We'll still do 1,219. And remember with 1%, that's 0 0.01 times this number. And we can move our decimal point back to the left here. And we'll just estimate that at 12. Now, this is 1 fourth percent. So far we found 1%. And so now to finish this, what we need to do is to take the 12 and multiply by 1 fourth. Again, we've estimated 
1% of this at 12. So now just finish by going, well, if this is about 1%, if I want a quarter of a percent or one fourth of a percent, we found the 1%, now let's multiply that by one fourth, and you get three. What about 49% of 61? Well, what if we compute this as 50% of 60? Well, 50% is one half times 60, and half of 60 is 30. Now, what about our percents greater than 100? Here we have 155% of 38. Well, let's take this 38 to 40, and our 155% we can say is 150% of 40. Now, question, what is 100% of 40? Well, 100% of 40 is just 40. What about 50% of 40? Well, that's half of 40, which is just 20. And there lies our answer. We have 100% is 40, 50% is 20. And if we go, well, the 100% plus the 50% is my answer of 60. Now, these are just sample answers. These are just sample estimates. You can certainly get different estimates for here. And I know this section says to find percent of a number mentally, but I would still encourage you to write down something, write down what you're estimating these percents or these whole numbers to. Uh, that way, if your answer is a little bit different than, say, a book answer, when I go, well, what did you use to estimate? That way you have an answer, and that way we can see if your estimate is reasonable. Now, speaking of reasonable, a restaurant bill totals $21.35. You want to leave a 15% tip. So what is a reasonable amount for a tip? Now, you should always tip at least 15% in a restaurant, 20% uh, if it's excellent service, and, you know, 15% if it's eh service. But remember, your waiters and waitresses only make their money on tips for the most part. So, anyways, now that that announcement's over, my previous restaurant experience coming through, let's take our $21.35. And we can break apart our 15% into 10% and 5%. Now, we're looking at a reason, but we're looking at kind of an estimate still here. So we don't need to use 2135. We can actually just use $21 or 22. Again, we're just looking for an estimate. Now, 10% of 21 is the same thing as that 0.1 times 21, where we just move the decimal point back once to the left, and we get $2.10. Well, that $2.10 is 10%. What is the relationship between 10% and 5%? Well, 5% is half of 10%. So we can take our $2.10 and find half of that. And half of $2.10 is $1.05. Now see what we've done. We've estimated our total bill at $21. We found 10% is $2.10. 5% is half of 10%. So if we find half of the 10% amount, we have these two numbers now, $2.10 and $1.05. Add these two numbers up, and you get $3.15 for the tip. That's it. Good luck.